Arno, shout out. Thank you for making the Hennessy. It's delicious. That's, that's the LVMH company. I'm kind of very much so in, in beefing with them right now because they killed my best friend, Virgil. Uh, How did they kill Virgil? They, first of all, they hired him. Um, well, do you want the, uh, you want the, I'm going to try to like give you the abbreviated story. Yeah. Okay. So Virgil was hired as my assistant and he ended up becoming one of my best friends because we traveled everywhere. We traveled to Japan. We interned in Italy at Fendi because we weren't accepted in Paris and we started to gain momentum in the design world. And then Virgil did his own line called Off-White. Um, and then I stopped doing the Kanye West line. I started doing the Yeezy line. And I did a, a licensing deal. I had a licensing deal with, um, with um, Adidas. I mean, we still have that deal. And we did this fashion show that was the um, the... It was like the most seen fashion show in history. So Bernard Arnault, the head of LVMH, asked to meet with me. And he offered me a deal. But with the deal, they had to have ownership because they're colonizers. Uh, they, they're not there to just, hey, we're going to give you support and, you know, you do the best thing you can. They, all, the, all these people, a lot of the VCs and a lot of these kind of companies, they have to have ownership. And Louis Vuitton had presented themselves in such a way to have so much real estate where a black man's dream come true would be to have that level of support from a company because then we can go back into the neighborhood in our pink Cadillac, metaphorically. Yeah. Now, the pink Cadillac was literally invented for that. Do like Google that. I don't feel we don't have enough time to talk about it right here. The, um, the Cadillac, that specifically called the pink, is just like so. Um, all of my design team wanted to work with Louis Vuitton. So Bernard Arnault shook my hand, said we're going to do the Kanye West deal at Louis Vuitton. And I was actually going to give him the lion's share, which God, thank God I didn't. Three months later, they dropped the deal at the board. The next collection uh, I do, season two, we don't have anyone to support it because I had to have Adidas indemnify the collection. The third collection, we're there. Uh, Virgil's working with me. He's got his line, but he's my main employee. And he's um, running the Donda uh, design group. And he's bringing in Heron Preston. And Matt Williams is working with me. And we have our, our crew. Um, and we do this show at MSG. And it's like a big hit. Uh, season four, I, uh, I did a show. And it started late. And I was really depressed about that. Then a week later, Kim got robbed in Paris. Then I, I just tell Scooter after I finish this leg, Scooter Braun was my manager at that time. I said, after I finish this leg of the tour, I need to, uh, I need to, I need to just take a rest. I need to go to Japan. I love it in Japan. And they, um, Scooter's like, no, you have to do more touring. And four days into that tour, I was exhausted. I screamed from stage. I would have voted for Trump. This stuff. I was like, it's also from everything at that time. Like the fashion show, my wife getting robbed, all these people telling me I couldn't say anything about Trump. Uh, it was just a lot. And I ended up in the hospital and I wear that badge. Every conversation I can be, you know, put down for that. So Virgil is going on and, you know, being more and more successful and clicking all the dots, all the boxes that a black designer and black creative should click more than anyone ever. He's basically like Michael Jordan. You know, he is the Michael Jordan of fashion, literally. Uh, he's clicking all of these dots and he gets the deal to be the head of men's design at Louis Vuitton, which is, you know, aside from Hermes, is one of the most prestigious jobs in the world. And he goes in and the product is selling. Uh, Virgil was the, actually the third person to die of cancer in that organization. Uh, so not just black men have passed in that organization, uh, but the third person to die of cancer that was in a higher up position in that organization. And 
with Paris is a different level of elitism and racism. And Virgil was the kind of guy that uh, he didn't hold it in. And I believe it ate him up from inside. And how old was he? 40, early 40s. Hmm. Uh, and they were like, what you mean you were his best friend? You don't know the exact age, but I don't know the date. <laughs> you know. He's a young man. Yeah, he's a young man. So, uh, so he, um, uh, the level of racism, elitism, and pressure that he was under, I'm sure affected his health. And then at that point, also me and Virgil had a rivalry because he had taken my place in fashion. He now was Drake to the radio of what he was to fashion. And we had a strained relationship also. But the people I've spent the most time with in my life is my mom, second, Kim, third, Virgil. Lost all three of them in, you know, in some way Mm. at this point. Um, So, I felt what Bernard Arnault, not only did he pull on the deal that contributed to me breaking down uh, and go back on his word with that, um, he also went on to hire multiple people out of my organization. Like anyone that ever worked with me,